Mike Finger, how are you doing tonight? I'm well, I'm well. Welcome back to your exit squad, David. I'm putting the URL up on the screen for everyone so they know it's yourexitsquad.com. That's that we we secured the rights to the to the name of the show. And if you go there, it right now anyway, it'll direct you, it'll take you directly to our YouTube landing page where you can hit the subscribe button. And I mean, we have not made any episodes public yet, and already people are subscribing. So I will I hope that if you're tuned in and you're watching the show and you haven't done so yet, that you'll come on over and hit the subscribe button. It would really help us a lot. Absolutely. There's uh there's some neat stuff coming. So uh if you don't want to miss it, get that done. But that's not the only URL they can go to, is it, David? Well, no, you see, th this is a show for small business owners, and it's about change and it's about the exit that everyone one day will have to take in one shape or another to leave their business. And so if you are a small business owner and you're watching our program and you and you think that you have a story that would be insightful for others, or if you have something going on in your business that you think that we may be able to get some help for you uh, to address, then if you head over to your exit squad guests with an S.com, there's a form there that you can fill in where you can give us some brief details and then we can we can take a look at that and we can reach back out to you and see about having you as a guest on the show. That's right. It's a, it's a simple application to fill out just some basic information and then uh, we'll reach out and have a conversation and, and figure out the best way to help you through. Now, the normal format of our program is that we meet small business owners, we have a talk with them, we learn their story, and then we try to match them with one of our partners who's gonna be able to help them out. And tonight we're going to meet one of those partners. That's right. That's right. Part of this process for us is, is helping owners understand more about the, the support and expertise that's out there in this exit area. And the best way that we could figure out how to do that is to talk to the people that do this sort of thing for a living. So, um, and obviously both you and I are in this space as well, but there is a rich variety of resources, uh, many of them are our partners who have who offer to uh, provide some free service and support to guests that come on the show. And our, our guest tonight is one of those partners. That's right. So let's introduce Matt. And, and if you're a service provider, if you work with small businesses, just stay tuned at the end. We'll, we'll talk some more about how you can get signed up with us if you think that you can help out some of our guests. But let's, uh, let's bring Matt in. Yeah, very good. Matt Carl, Maine Ascent Business Brokers and Advisors. Welcome. Hey guys, how are you? Excellent. Excellent. Great. How, how are you this evening? We're doing all right and we're doing good. Well, Matt, I'm I'm excited to hear your story. Give us give us a little background. How did you end up doing what you're doing? Okay. So, uh, maybe an unconventional route. Uh, I grew up thinking I was going to work in sports for my whole life. Uh, my dad was a sports writer in my hometown. So I got to see behind the scenes. I was in the interview rooms. I got to go in the locker rooms and stuff and see sort of behind the scenes. I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. So I grew up a soccer fanatic, uh, played through high school and had the opportunity to start coaching about back when I was about 16. I got, I got volunteered by my mm -hmm. high school coach to work with the three and four year olds. Loved it. Absolutely fell in love with coaching soccer at that point. I'm like, okay, this is it. This is my path. So did my undergrad in sport management, minor in entrepreneurship. I did a master's degree in sport management, all in pursuit of this soccer job that I wanted to, to go out and get or create for myself. Moved across the country, worked for the Portland Timbers for a while. That's the MLS team out there in Portland. Um, and again, just sort of immersed myself in this. Met my wife there, like lots of great things came from it. Um, but a day came along where I got fired. Not from the Timbers, from the youth club that I was working with at the time, I got fired. And uh, a good friend of mine had been a business coach within, with Emith for a number of years prior to that. He had introduced it to me and we used to get together and have lunch and talk about the similarities between coaching, you know, uh, irrational teenage boys on a soccer team and irrational entrepreneurs in their small businesses. And uh, he was one of the first people I talked to after I got fired. He introduced me to Emith and, uh, you know, okay, I'm thinking about it. Maybe, maybe it works. Maybe it fits. Um, and he says, you know what? You're going, uh, they had an immersion event. It was down in San Diego. And he said, I'm buying your ticket. You're going to go. And you know, this act of generosity, I've never been able to, to really repay him for that. Cause I, I walked in that ballroom and I knew I was in the right place. 
And, I, and just for people who who may be listening who don't know what what Matt means by E Myth is it's all based on the book E Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, where right. it's 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 basically a foundational text about how you organize and better run a business so that you can you know the owner can take a step back and 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 have employees empowered and systematized to to take care of things. And so this event that you're describing was it like a like a big uh, conference sort of thing? Uh, what was going on there? Yeah, so it, there it was a uh, an event called immersion for prospective coaches who wanted okay. to um, potentially deliver this program. So thank you for, I, I take for granted sometimes that not everyone knows what I'm talking about when I talk about EMIT. So thank you for that, David. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, an immersion event for prospective coaches. Uh, and again, walked in and knew I was in the right place. Like the, the values aligned my skills and abilities to, to work with individuals and help people develop aligned really well. And you know, the, the content and what EMIT provides for us as coaches to be able to go in and help and have an impact with these small business owners was a really valuable asset for me. So that was back in 2016. And I've been a, a licensed EMIT coach ever since, right? So six going, coming up on seven years, working with small business owners every day to help them improve their businesses, to help them grow and develop. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the main part of my story, I suppose, in terms of how I got here. Um, the folks at Main Ascent, I met back in 2020, as the firm was just being formed. Um, I had been going out to have conversations with business brokers so I could learn more about you know, what happens on the back end. Once a business is systematized and well-prepared and the, the owner can be free of it, okay, what does that next step look like? So I wanted to be informed. I wanted to be educated so I could help my clients more. And started having conversations with a few business brokers around me and went like, oh, I can do that. You know, that's another way that I can help people and serve people and, um, you know, make an impact for these small business owners that are so vital to, to our economy and everything we do. A group of people that I really enjoy working with. So it's just another thing that I can do and another service that I can offer. And I guess that brings us up to about today. Matt, do you remember thinking back? Do you remember the first conversation with an owner around exit? Any idea when that <clears throat> happened? It was pretty early on because I had a, an owner that came to me as a client, as an EMIT client, um, had been running a, an in-home nursing business for years and years and years um, with her son. And she was getting to a point where she didn't know if she wanted to keep doing it. Her son wanted, the, wanted to own the business, but didn't want to run the business. And so that was one of the early conversations of like, okay, how can we transfer this business to him, set it up to be successful without having that owner in a hands-on position, right? And set her up for her retirement, set the son up to be successful, the terms of the business and everything else. And so, yeah, it was, I mean, literally my second or third client, we were starting mm -hmm. to have those conversations of what does this need to look like? What does the transition look like? Um, sort of sorry to say that we didn't pull that one off the, the way that we would have hoped. And um, the son ended up a lot more involved day to day in the business than he probably would have liked, at least initially. Sure, sure. I, I, I've known a lot of business brokers over the years who have uh, sometimes moved towards this exit preparation work or, or helping to prepare or, or coach people to get ready for an exit. Was it was that one of the things that uh, that that your new teammates were looking for when they brought you on board was someone who could work with people to help to help get people ready for exit? Because I know when I had my business brokerage, um, I met a lot of people who were just this existing in a frenzied whirlwind, like some of the guests that we've talked to on the show. And I remember saying to these people, if I bring anyone in to see the way you live, they're never going to want to buy this. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I, you're absolutely right, David. Uh, there's, you know, we know the statistics, right? 80% of small business owners don't get to sell their business. Mm. It, it's unsellable for one reason or another. And, you know, what we're trying to do at Main Sound, what we're trying to build is sell, buy, grow, right? For an owner who's ready to sell, we want to help them take the business to market and, and have a successful exit. If you're looking to buy a business or acquire another business, we're set up to help you there. And grow is a, a piece that's missing in you know a lot of stages of small business is 
helping people develop and actually make something that's useful and, and sellable at the end of the day. Hmm. So yeah, it's a, you know, that coaching skill set, my experience working with the other small business owners certainly fits that, that need within main ascent, but it fits the needs of the, the market and the entrepreneurs as well. I mean, how many business owners do we all know that just need an outside voice that just needs somebody to help, help them navigate some of these challenges. And that's what I try and do is, is just to, you know, be a, be a mirror for people to help them see some of this stuff slightly differently and, and take a new tact or take a new approach to solving some of these problems. Matt, talk about that a little bit, because I, I understand, I understand logically the words you're saying, but if I'm a small business out there, if, you know, fighting the good fight, Tell, tell me pragmatically, what, what does what you just said look like in practice? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I think one of my best examples is a, is a client I have. I'll, I'll keep his name out of it. Um, mm -hmm. He's out in Los Angeles. He runs a packaging and label company, right? A lot, like hundreds of thousands of small boxes and stickers and labels and things like this. We started working together probably 20, end of 2017, early 2018. And he had a team of five people. He touched everything that happened in the business, right? Sales, procurement, delivery, everything. He had to touch it. And they were doing decent, maybe a million dollars a year in revenue, okay? Squeaking out a profit, paying the bills, like sustainable but not great, not in a great spot. So we help remove him from a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. The team grows so he can delegate more. We put repeatable systems in so the business runs predictably without him having to touch everything, but they're still getting the, the results that they need. And they're at a point now where his team is probably close to, it's 25 to 30 people, right? They're doing close to a million dollars a month in revenue. They're, they've grown massively both in the scale of the clients that they serve, the number of clients that they serve, the profit has grown. Like every measure of that business has improved in the time that we've worked together because he's been able to step back from the day to day to, mm -hmm. to put his owner's hat on a lot more and actually navigate how the business needs to run, not just put his head down and run it every day. And so those are the types of things that we try and do with, with the coaching clients and advisory clients is to help people see there's a different way to do a lot of this stuff. That you, that you as the owner don't have to put your hands on every single thing. Every single aspect of the business doesn't have to run through you. So is that, is that a, but I, I mean, is that a teaching process? Hey, this is how it could work or I, I, I mean, Get real granular for me. Sure. Yeah. You and you, uh, it's the first day. How, wh what do we do? How, sure. how do you? Uh, th this is a great question because I mean, lots of people can go online and have people say you need systems in your business. So you don't have to do everything yourself. It's, it's how do you get from listening to that to actually implementing and how does the, the coaching process that you're doing help the person actually get to the moment where somebody else does something and they don't feel they need to go and look over that person's shoulder. Sure. Sure. I love this stuff, guys. I'll go as, I'll go as granular as you want. Um, everything starts with an assessment, right? We take a baseline of how everything's running. That's financials. That's your systems. That's your people, everything. We have to have a baseline to start. Once we have that, <clears throat> we try and build a long-term picture of how, how we want the business to run. Right. And so sometimes that's the simple framework of like, I don't want to have to touch everything, but we try and get really detailed in terms of what are the revenue goals? What are the staffing goals? How, how would the systems work so that it's smooth and predictable and you don't feel like you have to touch it every day. Right. So it's, it's painting a picture and that's where I bring my expertise to say, those things are possible. Some of this stuff isn't right. Sometimes we, we ask that question and I had somebody once tell me, uh, my goal is to build a $500 million business. That's just, that's a different stratosphere from where we're starting, right? That, that, that's not on the table right now. We need to talk about something realistic in the next three or four years, right? So we try and attach the owner to that real tangible goal. And then we reverse engineer what needs to happen between where you are now and mm -hmm. what's going to get you to that goal, right? If 
marketing is an issue. If you're not getting the leads that you need, then we start to analyze your marketing. We say, what are you doing? What results are you getting? What changes can we start to make? And then we measure those changes. We see what impacts happen as we start to make those changes, right? So I'm not there to, to lecture anyone. I'm not there to pretend that I have all the answers, right? I always say that anybody who is trying to sell you a silver bullet is lying to you. I don't have any silver bullets for sale, but I do have some pretty solid principles on how a small business is meant to run. So we have a couple of meetings a month, two to four typically. Um, we talk about you know issues of the day for a portion of the call, and then we focus on those bigger picture systems that need to be developed, the, the high level priorities from the owner's perspective that sometimes that's the only 30 minutes or an hour that they get in their entire week to put the owner's hat on and, and work through this stuff and think through this stuff. Every meeting ends with you know specific action items, right? The owner commits, I will do these things in the next week or two weeks, and I'm gonna hold them accountable for that to make sure that they're actually taking action on this stuff because you know it, it's a waste of time if it's an academic exercise, right? Mm. The the EMIT program in particular has a lot of different content, right? There's a there's all sorts of you know, guides and worksheets that we can put our hands on within EMIT. But if we treat it like school, if we're not going out and implementing it, it's a waste of everyone's time. So I don't really have a lot of interest in the in the theory of it. I want to see what ideas can we take right now today and go and install in your business tomorrow and start to measure those results. That's really what we're trying to do. So what would be an example of one of those weekly to do's that you might give that someone might agree to do? Sure. I mean, uh, here, let me let me pull up my notes from today. Um, <laughs> earlier today, we talked about um, updating a sequence in a, in a welcome email. So one of my clients has a, a community aspect to his business where he's got all of his customers that can get together, talk, ask questions, what, whatever it might be. We know that if the, his customers are engaged in that community, they're something like four or five times more likely to stay, especially if, they're, if they get engaged in that community in the first six weeks. So we talked today about, okay, you're sending one email and you're welcome. You have a single welcome email now. Let's build a sequence where you send that one and then two weeks later, another and another and another so that we're giving multiple touch points in those first six weeks. That way they're engaged and that's going to, in theory, increase that retention rate long term. So he went out today and he's going to write the, the next three email sequence. We'll circle back in two weeks. To, well, yeah, a little over two weeks to see how that went. We'll look at the copy. We'll see how it's all set up on the back end, and then we'll put it in play and we'll see how that affects his numbers over the next few, you know, few weeks and months. And, you know, I, I expect we'll see a pretty significant result from something like that. So Matt, I, 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 I completely track with what you're saying. Let me, let me pose a question to you and let, let me personalize it. Um, I've been lucky enough to own several small businesses. And what I know from my early career as an owner is that I wouldn't have hired a coach, which is really odd for me because I'm now a coach. Yeah. <laughs> and so I have come to terms with the fact that I would not have hired myself for that first 15 years of ownership. Mm -hmm. What do you say to me at that point I'm not looking for your sales pitch, but my rationale would have been, why do I pay Matt to do this for me when I ought to just be able to do it myself? Sure. I tend to start with, why aren't you doing it? Right? We, you can do a Google search right now for small biz business advice and you'll get 2 billion hits, right? Mm. Like we all have bookshelves full of this stuff. You can't see my bookshelf, but it's here, I promise, right? And all of those ideas work. You hire a coach because it's someone that is going to hold you accountable to doing the work. You hire a coach because it's an outside perspective that isn't nose down in your business and stuck on the day-to-day -day issues because you get that additional perspective. And you know that continuing to do the same thing again and again and again isn't going to get you a different result. That's why you hire a coach. Now, 
I've talked to plenty of people just like you 15 years ago, Mike, like those folks come along all the time. And the other piece of it is as an owner, you have to be willing to make a change. You have to be willing to do things differently for yourself before we see any results in your business. You have to think about your business differently. You have to act differently within your business if you're going to see different results. And I think that's actually the biggest barrier to, to people coming into coaching is that resistance to change and the, the difficulty in saying like, what I'm doing is wrong and I'm going to do it differently. That's really, really hard to do. Mm -hmm. We can tort ourselves into all sorts of ridiculous positions to support the businesses the way that they run right now. And it gets uncomfortable, but it's still harder to change it than it is to keep doing what you've been doing. So is this really about making changes in a business or is it about an owner making changes in themselves? It's always both. It has to be both. Because if we just change the business and the owner doesn't show up any differently, the mm -hmm. same issues are going to keep coming up. The same, the, the same problems will find a new way of showing up and they're going to keep showing up. Right? Like the client I talked about earlier, if he didn't decide, okay, I don't have to touch shipping anymore. I don't have to touch the lead generation anymore. I don't have to touch every box that goes out of the factory. If he didn't consciously shift how he's thinking about his business and how he's doing that stuff every day, it wouldn't matter how many people he added to his team. It wouldn't matter how many new leads were coming in because he was, he would have stayed attached to an old way of doing business. The owner has to be willing to, to think about it and look at it differently. If the business is actually going to change and the, the changes you make are going to stick. I, I love that. So take us, take that mindset, take, take what you just said and bring us into that exit context. Now, how, how does, how do you take that approach and apply it to the exit space? Sure. Preparing your business to sell is not the same as running your business day to day. Mm. Preparing, your, preparing for an exit means your business has to continue to run day to day, but you as the owner have to look at and do things differently, right? Um, simple things like tax planning, running your business day to day. There are plenty of owners that are convinced we need to pay as little tax as possible, right? They're, they're always looking to, to buy new assets, to bonus people out. Like they're driving down that taxable revenue number at the end of the year. People are right in the middle of it right now. When you're getting ready to exit your business, every dollar that's there is worth a multiple when you go to sell it. So that's a, that's a shift right there. The owner has to look at that tax bill differently. Yes, you're paying 25 cents on the dollar in taxes, but every dollar that you keep in the business is worth $3.50 when you go to sell it, right? There's, there's all sorts of things that you have to, to look at and view differently as an owner when you're preparing for an exit. The, the business has to run without you in large part, right? You have to be able to step back, step out and take four weeks off, take six weeks off. And the business has to continue to deliver the same kind of results because that's what the new owner is going to be looking for. So the perspective that the owner takes has to be focused on what does this look like without me and what other changes need to happen to, to maximize that value when it's time to actually turn and sell it. What kind of barriers do you run into with owners when you walk that path? I, excuse me. Um, often you, we see people that have a uh, inflated idea of what their business is worth or should be worth, mm -hmm. right? They've been so, or, you know, related to that, they've been so head down in their business that they don't have retirement savings. They don't have you know, other funds for, uh, to support themselves when they, once they do exit the business. And so they do the math and say, I need $2 million to live the rest of my life. My business was, must be worth $2 million. 
right? Well, that's not how that math works at all. We have to be able to, to justify that price. The new owner has to be able to pay it out of the revenues of the business and all sorts of things. So that's a big one, I think, is people's perception of the value of their business is a, is a big challenge, right? Sure. And if they're not in regular conversation with someone who can help them see that or, or apply, you know, even a, a rough formula to what their business might be worth one day, they show up at the end of their career, so to speak, or, you know, 70 plus years old, ready to sell and only to realize that the business isn't worth anything or, or not worth nearly what they need it to be. So far in, in the conversation we've had, we've talked about how 80% of small businesses don't get to sell. And we've also referenced the fact that many small businesses sell for multiples of their cash flow, but that multiplier is a rather low number. It's not the kind of numbers you see like in the stock market and stuff like that, right? Yeah. 12X, so, I saw it, I get to sell for 12X. <laughs> so one of the things that I've often pointed out to most business owners is I've said, if it's really hard to sell a business and if you do succeed in selling it, it sells for quite a low price because it's a risky asset, right? Mm -hmm. That means that the benefit of ownership is not in the exit. The benefit of ownership is in the operation. It's in all the years that you earn those profits. And when they, when they, I think when people start to realize that, hey, you know, the biggest value this business will hold for me is the money I'm making right now. So I can have a profit, take it out, invest in some other things, you know, build that retirement account. So if I can't sell the business, I still have an option right, of how I'm going to retire. But when they start to realize that, they actually end up with a more sellable business. Absolutely because, right. Right, because then they start to think, how can I make more money now? Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. You know, um, Emith would call that the freedom to choose, right? You've built your business up in such a way, it's, it's mature, it runs on its own, like it's, it's fully systematized and predictable that you can choose what you want to do every day. You can choose if you want to go into the office or if you, you can choose if you want to have a quarterly meeting with the, you know, with a general manager, a COO, right? That's maximizing that day-to-day -day ownership value. And it's also maximizing what that business might sell for in the future, mm -hmm. right? One of my favorite stories is, a, is an Emith client gets on the, a call with his coach and the wind is just howling in the background. Where, where are you? What is going on? You guys are like, oh, I'm up on the roof. I'm running cable today. Why on earth are you 30 feet up, you know, hanging off a roof running cable today? Well, it's Thursday. I run cables on Thursday. And this owner was so dialed in in his business that he got to choose one day a week to put on his tool belt and go out and run lines and run cable and do the hands-on technician work that he loved to do because everything else in his business could run without him. And I just think it's such an awesome story because he got to choose that, right? He wasn't forced into doing it. There was no need for him to be up there, but he enjoyed the work and he wanted to put his tool belt on once a week. And he got to go and do that. And I know for a fact, he eventually got a pretty sizable exit because that business ran smoothly and predictably. And again, he, he got to choose to what he wanted to do on any given day. That's the end goal. You're absolutely right, David. If it's if it's a fun business to run, it's more attractive to a potential buyer. So why do clients or prospects come to you now, Matt? Do most of them come because they do owners know they want to exit before they come to you? Or is that is that part of the process of discovery? They know they want to exit in sort of a, a far off, I know that's the end of the story kind of way. But they're not in a position where they say, like, I need to be out of this business tomorrow or, or even 18 months from now, right? The clients that we have the most success with are the ones that can take a long, long term view, can put a long timeline against, I need to exit in five years and give us time to actually build that business up and build that asset up so that it's sellable and you know really valuable at the end of the day right the the owners the majority of owners that i work with now show up because they're stuck 
and they know there's another level. They know there's another gear in their business, but they're not quite sure how to get there on their own. Or sometimes they show up right after a crisis. Mm -hmm. Something happens, right? Like employee number one who, who carries everything in her head, she just walked out the door. Or our, you know, our number one client that was 30 or 40% of our revenue just broke their contract and they're gone. Or something like that plenty sure. of people still show up in that in that crisis mode and there they need that you know that calm reassuring voice on the other side of the line that says like we can get through this right you're gonna you're gonna find a way but it's not never easy do, do you have many people that are suffering a personal crisis that end up seeking your help because they realize they need to take some time out of the business to handle something in their in their personal or family life you know i've had people in the past show up when they're kind of mid crisis, I mean, the divorce rate for entrepreneurs does tend to be higher than uh, general population. Um, unfortunately, if we're trying to work through personal issues by doing business coaching, there's usually a disconnect, <laughs> right? Like I, I am not a therapist. I do, I do not have nearly the credentials to help you with your, your uh, therapy issues. And my therapist would attest to that. Right. But, Yes, the, it's it's personal transition. It's all these moments that that trigger like, oh, I, I should probably be paying attention to this or I need to make some changes here. If we're trying to work through just personal problems through, you know, via our business, it's not nearly as successful as I have this personal issue and I need to fix my business because of it. Then, yeah, we, we do have uh, plenty of people that show up in that way. And I was just curious because um, like in my brokerage days, uh, more often than not, when somebody showed up to talk about selling their business, they were being motivated by a personal issue that made them realize they wouldn't be able to carry on uh, sure. being the operator of the business. It was very, it was like the one in 10 business owner that came in and said, I'm looking for some help and guidance because I'm going to like exit in several years time and I want you know help to plan my way, you know, to have the best outcome. That was very rare. It was, it was, you know, I call them, they were the big five. It was uh, burnout and fatigue, divorce, poor health, the need to relocate um, and retirement, you know, and they were all, they're all personal things, but it's what seemed to bring people through the door to say, Hey, I, I need to get out of this. No, absolutely. I mean, how many times have you, have we talked about it, Mike? Like how many times do you post about exactly that, that thing, right? It's, you know, something is knocking at the door and I need to get out of this business right now. It's, I would I would love to know the uh, the percentage. I would love to know the results of how many owners actually execute an exit plan, right? Where they say I'm going to sell the business at the end of 2024. I need to work backwards from there. That means that my personal opinion is that that's an almost never kind of thing. I, I just think life has a tendency to sneak up on most owners. And that's the reason why you need to be ready to be ready, right? You, you, you need to be able to, as you, you alluded to, Matt, to have that freedom to choose. But that speaks to a level of preparedness. And the problem is, is that most owners, they think about that as something future-based, Right. Boy, Matt sounds great. I will call him in 17 years when I'm three years away from when I'm planning to exit my business. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, it's, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, uh, I'll connect it back to what you said a minute ago, David, where the, the folks that come in and put together the most comprehensive plans of, in terms of how this business needs to run in order for me to exit tend to be the ones that end up sticking around their business. Right. They get it to a point where it's it's not a drain on their time and energy anymore. They get to a point where it is fun to run again and they're a lot more likely to stick around. And, you know, they blow past that exit date because it's profitable and it's enjoyable and they want to stick around. Those are the right. most successful ones. And, and they can do a different format of exit. They can they can all of a sudden have the option of spending six months in a warmer climate or, you know, what have you, um, because they've got it running so well. Exactly right. I, I'm working with a, a client on the brokerage side right now where the owner took six weeks off in the middle of their busy season and went and hiked through Europe. Like checked his cell phone, checked his email 
once or twice a week and the business just hummed along. They had no real issues. He, you know, he answered a couple of questions during his six weeks, but he was almost completely disconnected and, you know, he isn't going to exit. They'll, they'll sell their business and, and move on to, to other you know, new challenges. But that's one of the best examples I've ever seen or heard of six weeks in the busy season. He was almost unreachable and the business just kept plugging along. That, that, that prompted something for me, Matt. Um, so I overgeneralizing the culture of coaching tends to be more about farming. The culture of brokerage tends to be more about hunting. How, how do you put those two cultures? How do those two cultures coexist? I mean, the reality of my business right now is it is two separate pieces in large part, right? Um, the coaching clients who show up, we're typically dealing with coaching issues. The brokerage clients who show up, we're dealing with brokerage issues. Sure. Um, I think that there is a lot of room for, you know, uh, symbiosis there of, of those two cultures working together, right? In that we, I, I would love to, and I expect to work with clients over a number of years and get them to a point where they're ready to exit and then be able to walk them through that process as well. Right. But the, the reality is most people who show up ready to sell their business are in a different place. They're not in a, mm. you know, three years, you know, I, I have three more years in me kind of, kind right. of mindset, right. They're right. ready, ready to sell. And, it's still a long-term process. We still tell people, you know, nine, 12, 18 months is pretty typical. Yeah. And we have to be prepared to continue running the business during that time. And we'll help you with that. I think but it's a unique combination. I, I, I know a lot of brokerages that have explored that because they get, right, they get so many of those, uh, I want to sell my business. It's not ready conversations. Mm -hmm. And when you're just a brokerage, that's a call you're trying to get off of as quick as you possibly can, because you don't have a, a service offering to bring them along. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's intriguing that you get to do both. Yeah. Well, we love it. The, and we've got such a great team at Main Ascent of people with experience on the brokerage side, people experienced doing, you know, mergers and acquisitions, corporate turnaround, coaching, like, we have such an awesome skill set that really no matter where people come from, we're in a position to help them if they're if they want to do the work, if they want the help. Sure. So now you're in you're in Denver, but you're working with people all over? Yeah. So my coaching clients are actually I've got a couple international still to this day. One of my longest running coaching clients is a kosher butcher in Johannesburg, South Africa. One wow. of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and such just a fascinating business dynamic over the years as well. Doing really, really well. Um, our brokerage primarily is focused here in Colorado, but coaching is, yeah, all over the place. See, a lot of small business owners that I've met, if they had a client in South Africa, they would use that as a reason to travel there to go it, and visit, <laughs> visit that client for a business meeting. Obviously, yeah, it's it's uh, been on the calendar for any number of years. And <laughs> one day, one day, that that would almost be a business necessity, I would think, to yeah, to go make that visit. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, and then they would add it back when they tried to sell right. their business. <laughs> and and I think it's the the travel and everything else, and then would have to taste some of the food too. Well, I mean, of course, these of course. high quality products, you'd have to do some quality control there. <laughs> Matt, what haven't we touched on? What uh, tell us more? Uh, point us somewhere that we haven't uh, explored. Well, I don't know, guys. I you know you you hit all my favorite spots and the nitty gritty coaching conversations and uh, personal change as a way to improve your business and systems and operations. Um, let's see. I, you know, I'll just reiterate, guys. I think one of the most important things is the the mindset of the owner, how they show up to to do the work, whether it's getting ready to sell the business, right? Whether they're they're getting close to an exit, whether they're ready to put their head down and and do some additional work to to move the business along. I tie it back to my my experience in sports, right? It's how can I get better? How can I 
show up and do this work to, to maximize my skill, to maximize what I can do. And, you know, I, I love that connection between the personal development and, and the business world, because I think so many entrepreneurs are the, the readers, the self-help types, the, the ones that want to do the personal development and everything else. That's why I love this work is because I get to work with passionate people and uh, help them move along. But, you know, everyone shows up at a different point, at a different place in their own journey. And I think that's one of the most exciting things is that there, there's always an opportunity to help. There's always a chance to help people further themselves, further their businesses. I've got a question uh, to ask on behalf of Mike from 15 years ago. Um, you know, that Mike from 15 years ago is probably probably would have thought, oh, it might be helpful to have a coach or to talk to someone about my business, but, you know, I'm much happier having the money, the investment, I'd rather keep that. So, I mean, do you get the the fee objection often? Like, how, how do you frame that when you're talking with a prospective client? It's always a question. It's, hmm. it's an issue often, especially for folks that are showing up in a crisis, right? That, <clears throat> that tendency to, to want to hold on to that. It's very real. Um, I have a good friend of mine who always describes it as you're getting the best value of any employee investment you will ever make paying a coach to talk to you every month. Now, I'm, I'm not going to get in there necessarily and get my hands dirty in your business. I'm not the one running cables, but the, the value you get from investing the time, investing the energy and having that that outside perspective the roi is off the charts and if you're not making the changes on your own if you're not implementing all these you know this whole bookshelf of ideas in your business you know, you're better served to to hire someone and help have them help you make those changes and implement that stuff then you are holding on to that money at the end of the day if it means your business isn't sellable if it means your business isn't predictable and repeatable and systematized so that you can take a day off let alone six weeks off right the the return on making those changes putting your dollars behind your commitment to make those changes is huge and look it's not for everybody right there are plenty of people that they take a, a smaller view of that fee and say like, well, no, I, I need that money in the business this month, or I need it on my bottom line this month versus where, where can I be six months from now, three years from now, if we make this investment now, it's not for everyone. I know that. How'd I do Mike from 15 years ago? Is that, I, I mean, I, th I think for me, the answer there that, that would, would have resonated to Mike. Uh, it was probably 25 years ago, but I, I'm, I'm going to go with 15, um, is the results, right? I mean, that that's ultimate because I every small business owner that gets beyond a solopreneur status knows they have to invest money in an employee, new equipment. Mm -hmm. They are spending money every single day. And the compelling reason to do that is to see a return on that investment. And uh, what that rate of return is, uh, it, it, to me, is the compelling argument here. Uh, and that it sounds like your clients are seeing that. So and we're excited to for our uh, for our guests to see that, uh, Matt. And, and we're excited to have you part of the uh, your exit squad partners group because of that. So yeah, absolutely. Because I, I'm, I love what you're doing here. I love what you're building. I can't wait to, to see how it progresses. And uh, hear all these stories of these like really brave entrepreneurs to show up and have these conversations and, and invite all of us into their world and into their story. I, I love what you guys are building here. I'm happy to be a part of it and happy to follow along. Awesome. Wonderful. Where can people find you online if they'd like to connect or learn more about you? Absolutely. Uh, so mainascent.com. Uh, that's our business brokerage and uh, advisory firm here in Denver, Colorado. Um, and coachmattcarl.com is my personal coaching site. And you can find me there. LinkedIn, uh, Coach Matt Carl as well. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we'll be yeah. seeing you very shortly. Thanks, guys. Looking forward Thanks, to Matt. it. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good night, Matt.
Awesome. Yeah. 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 That, 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 uh, that coaching dynamic is such an interesting one. Again, I I've, I've experienced a personal conversion over the decades around that. And I love Matt's background as a coach, right? I mean, that it, as, as goofy as that sounds, but to bring that visual, that understanding, that approach to that business owner environment, I think is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, it, it's so interesting when he was talking about his different examples and the people that he's working with. It just made me remember so many di different people that I've crossed paths with over time. Yeah. And, and, you know, at the end there, when he was explaining about investing in yourself, um, you know, I have done a lot of different education programs over the years. And, and, you know, I have had coaches from at a few different points. Some of the, some of the things that I've also done is, is invested in, um, you know, mastermind groups, peer development groups, different education programs, like come and learn this specific skill sort of thing. And when I, when I think about a lot of those different things that I did, it almost always was able to improve my business or my personal skills in a, in a measurable way. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've always been pretty happy with that. Oh, it, and, and in this exit space, for me, the whole, a big part of the question comes down to advocacy. Mm. What we forget as owners is there is no advocate for your exit other than you, right? The, the copier breaks down and that's going to have an, a, an advocate. There, the, you're, everything in your business seems to have people pounding on the door for you, but the single biggest financial transaction in your life, nobody advocates for that. And to me, that's part of that offering, especially in this exit space from someone like Matt, is how do I invest in making this largest transaction Apple actually happen? Yeah. So let me ask you a big question is, is how on earth would we ever have met someone like Matt who might want to work with one of our guests? Well, that's really interesting. And more importantly, if if I'm an expert in 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 the business area, business services, whether it's coaching like Matt or marketing or some other need that a small business owner might have, where would I go if I wanted to join the Your Exit Squad Partners group? Well, funnily enough, we were able to secure the, the website yourexitsquadpartners.com with an S, partners with an S.com. And so if you are someone who works with small and medium-sized businesses in in any array of specialized area, like That's just right. like Mike said, whether you're a coach, a broker, a marketing person, accounting, bookkeeping person, uh, inventory specialist, you know, whatever the field is, we're likely going to bump into someone that's going to have a need in that specific category. And so it would be great to meet you. And all you have to do is go to yourexitsquadpartners.com, fill in a brief questionnaire. Uh, and let let us add you to our catalog of specialists that we can call upon. Absolutely, we'd love to uh, we'd love to add you. We'd love to have a conversation with you, like the one we had with Matt. We'd like to hook you up with small business owners who need what you do. So, awesome. Well, until next time, Mike. Have a great day. And, and it's a good thing we don't know anything about David from twenty five years ago because <laughs> I, at that time I didn't know I was supposed to like like shaved between my eyebrows and I was rock <laughs> I was rocking a unibrow and I kind of looked like a strange robot. Oh man, now there's got to be pictures of that around and they're going to have to make their way to a future episode. I got to <laughs> I got to see me some of that, David. Have a good evening. All right, have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>